Well, welcome to the ministry of Joseph House. I am Prophet Fowler or Roger Fowler Sr., whichever you prefer. Uh, we're going to do a teaching dealing with you can't serve two masters. As always, I want to start off with a, a, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we glorified you, Lord. Lord, we magnified your name. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the midst of your people. And Father, I pray even now, Father, that none of my words will fall to the ground, but it would meet your people in their hearts, Father, that it would turn their hearts around, Father, that it would fertilize their hearts to uh, to go back towards you and what you've called and what you've ordained in our lives, Father. We come against things such as a spiritual witchcraft that would try to behoove your people, Father. And Lord, we thank you for this time and this season for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's a blessing to come uh, before you once again. And I want to start out with a teaching. And we talked about the teaching dealing with you can't serve two masters. And I want to start with uh, Galatians uh, 3 and 1. It says this, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you shall not obey the truth before whose, uh, uh, be, uh, obey the truth, whose Jesus Christ has been, or who Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Now, <clears throat> what are dealing with, uh, a subject here where even we're in a time that is similar to even the times that perhaps Paul had dealt with uh, going back to uh, uh, the Old Testament. And it always comes a time that God blesses man and we have a tendency sometime in those blessings that we were blessed to a degree that we sometimes forget or turn our back on God and who he is from that perspective. And today I want to kind of just deal with more from the point or the perspective of the church itself uh, reaching out into the world and what it represents and what we're supposed to be, uh, be from that aspect. But we're dealing with the spirit of witchcraft. Uh, in other words, Paul was telling the church, who be with you? You're acting something totally outside of what God has called and what God's ordained about you in your life. Now, I just want to touch base on another scripture as we go forward into the, the, the word of God. Going into uh, uh, Ezekiel, the sixth chapter, it says this, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face towards the mountains of Israel, and prophesied against them, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a word upon you and I will destroy your high places and your altars shall be desolate and your images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols and I will lay the dead caucus of the children of Israel before thy idols, and I will scatter your bones around about your altars. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars shall be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols shall be broken and ceased, and your images may be cut down and your works may be abolished, and the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now, we're dealing with some things that's dealing with in our times. There's some things that the Lord's been dealing with me for a while as far as this, this message, this subject. There have been certain things that I've been having dreams about in reference of uh, certain things. And what we want to deal with, and the main thing when we come to this concept of this place, or when it was dealing uh, with uh, the church at large, uh, we see where there's a lot of things going on, and uh, men are, 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 are worshiping other idols. Men are, we're turning other ways, or turning our heart from God, or the purpose what God has called and ordained. 
one of the main things or the subjects that I thought about when it comes to the church. Now watch this. Watch how the spirit of witchcraft can creep in. There was a time, or there's a time where when one came and gave his life to Christ, there was transformation into his life, right? You came to Christ and you was dealing, like give you my example in my life, was years ago, came to Christ. And uh, when I truly submitted myself to God, the vices, the things that I used to do in the world, as far as drinking or, or running around, those things after I gave myself, submitted my uh, self unto the Lord and the altar, what happened was my life was transformed. That's what happens when you have a true experience uh, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But we're coming across some things now that men or the people of God are coming, people coming into the church and their lives is not changed. There's no difference in their lives, but yet they're convinced that they're saved and they know the Lord. How, friends, how is it that you can confess the Lord as your personal savior? Watch it, his blood that has redeemed us. The very blood that, that can, can, can kill cancers and all kinds of foreign disease and certain things from that aspect that can move, that, 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 that can move mountains, but yet you can come into the church and uh, it can't move the, the very uh, devices that you deal with. So the question is, who bewitched you? How is it that we got so far to this place that instead of serving a true living God, we begin to start serving idols and others and individuals to a degree that it uh, it filters out into the way into society. When we vote or anything we do in society is no different from the world, right? We've said, we've done certain things. Well, uh, let's do this. Let's change the music. Watch our preaching and certain things so it can be more inviting to bring someone into the church. We say we don't want to offend them because we want to begin to grow and do things from that point. Or the thing used to be this. It used to be where, well, you know, young folk coming in and, and they're not going to listen to all that, whatever the case is. But the point is a lot of those young folks, it's been 20, 30 years and they're still uh, uh, eating or, 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 or from the milk. They're drinking from the milk and eating baby food instead of growing up to a purse a maturity. They're still dealing with the same vices. My friends, how is it that you know the Lord is your personal savior and you still dealing with drugs or alcohol or fornication or certain things from that aspect? The true living God will transform those things in your life. And what's happening is because there's a spirit of, of bewitch or, 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 or that have cut creeped into the church or witchcraft, it has, in other words, tried to deceive us. And even in our society, uh, uh, the, the, the real God, or who is God in our lives? So this is the thing that we have to see and begin to understand. In serving him in our lives, that who are we going to serve? Are we going to serve the true living God? Or we're going to settle for idols and things. What have happened in the church, uh, we've gotten to a place that now we just, what we call the gospel is no more than motivational speaking or things just strictly on prosperity, things that's on the natural. We're not sowing in the spirit realm like we need to. In fact, what we call spiritual is natural. It's amazing. A lot of times when you deal with any other uh, religions or cults, when it comes to spiritual things, it's almost, now watch this, our God, our creator is the master, well, who understand, who created the spirit realm. But a lot of us is missing the concept of what it is, the power of prayer, that lives can be changed and transformed. This walk, what is this walk is about? This walk is about meeting someone, meeting the man that can change and transform your life. Let me just say this, if I can leave you with any, uh, a few words. Don't settle for the counterfeit. Don't settle for a rich craft. When it comes to when you really meet that person, uh, Jesus Christ, the spirit, who he is, the living Christ, 
the Holy Spirit, when you truly have a supernatural uh, encounter, your life is supernaturally changed and those old things are passed away. God loves